when they were pumping the mines out of the deep mines, the water was very acidic, and if there wasn't much dilution from overland water, uh, the Mon River would run red and be very acidic and be a very bad place to either try to fish, because there were no fish, you know, or to do anything in it. So all this so acid mine drainage and the other discharges that were coming in from dense run, from Deckers, uh, from all these other things were continually flowing into the Mon River. And it was in about 1970, 68, 69, 70, when the, clean, the first Clean Water Act was passed by Congress, which forced all the coal companies and other entities that were discharging water that they had to treat it. And so during that time, man oh man, about uh, 20 or 30 of these big AMD treatment plants were built around this area. And that had a huge, huge effect on the quality of the river. And it was those treatment plants that essentially turned over the water in the Mon River. Since 1970, for the last 30 or 40 years, the Mon River has been um, certainly above what I would consider a very contaminated river. It's so big it can assimilate a lot of those pollutants. There are a few metals in it here and there, chromium, lead, uh, copper, nickel, but again, those are usually pretty small quantities and usually under, you know, the regulated standards that EPA has established for most rivers. Um, people fish in it all the time and the fish populations are continually growing with a greater diversity of fish. Um, I think in general water sports are fine. I think if people swim in the river, you know, that's not a, not a big problem. Of course, there's still other polluted water that comes into the Mon River from various things, a lot of urban runoff from pesticides, from people uh, applying too many pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, maybe even nutrients. Um, because again, farmers still use fertilizers and that's yeah. much of the water that we drink. It does directly come from the Mon River. 